12th cranial nerve so first we will discuss ninth cranial nerve the glossopharyngeal nerve so it is a mixed nerve carrying both the sensory and motor fibers and solitary nucleus nucleus tract as solitary okay see here here is the course of it is the pharynx and also when it is the pharynx it is giving it supply and it is coming out at the ponto medullary junction You have seen through the jugular foramen. First is the nine, tenth, and eleventh cranial nerve. So, and it is accompanied by an internal carotid artery. Pharynx and where it lies over the sinopharyngeus muscle and the middle pharyngeal constrictor muscle. Okay. It then passes under common the palatine tongue, mucus and muscles, base of the tongue, and mucus gland of the mouth. The palatine tongue. Fossa, the palatine fossa, and other fossas of the mouth, from the tongue, and mucus glands of the mouth. Now, what are the components? Of These three now very important for a short note, okay, or a part of a long question if it comes. So, actual. So, what are the components? Or somatic visceral efferent (SVE). Somatic visceral efferent. It supplies the sinopharyngeus muscle. Now, the visceral motor component or central visceral efferent, parasympathetic innervation of the smooth muscle. It follows the parotid gland. Next is visceral sensory component. That is general visceral efferent component, and this innervates the baroreceptors of the carotid sinus and the chemoreceptors of the carotid body. So these are the components of this. So the mix compartment it carries pain, temperature, and touch from the skin of the external layer, internal surface of the body membrane. Next is special sensory component SA that is somatic efferent carries taste sensation from the posterior part of the. Their supplies are important. These are important branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Defining the middle area, lesser petrosal nerve. It arises from this flexor and passes to the parotid gland. Next is carotid branch, which carries the sensory fibers and now to stylopharyngeus, then pharyngeal branches, lingular branch, which supplies the posterior one third of the tongue. So these are the important branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Next, what is the clinical aspect? If lesion occurs in this nerve. The general sensory component mediates the gag reflex. Okay, gag reflex means the tongue will be elevated and it will close the opening. And pharyngeal nerve clinically. Okay, gag reflex will be lost if the lesion occurs in the glossopharyngeal nerve. Pharyngeal nerve or spinal accessory nerve. So the accessory nerve is the 
purely somatic motor function. Muscles are supplied by electrical threads. This is the electrical nerve and this is the spinal root. This is the spinal root. This is the spinal root. And this is the trapezius forming the boundary of the two boundaries of the posterior triangle of the neck. So what are the nuclei? The spinal root. Aspects of the anterior part of the electrical system and the brain nucleus and the spinal portion arises from C1 fiber C6 superiorly. Supplied by spinal accessory now, epidomastoid and trapezius. Along with the ninth and tenth. The During dissection of posterior triangle, if this important now was part of the posterior triangle, content of the posterior triangle and traverses the triangle <coughs> from sternocleidomastoid to the injury of this now because it is lying superficially if injury occurs in the posterior triangle. Okay, and there Coming out from the medulla, the medulla in between the olive and the joint of the hypoglossal nerve, coming out from the hypoglossal canal. Hypoglossal canal is occipital condyle. It is coming out from the hypoglossal canal. It is supplied by the much more smaller. And arises from the lateral aspect of the medulla oblongata and it leaves the cranium via the jugular foramen where it is deeply contacts the accessory nerve. And immediately after leaving the skull, the cranial part combines with the vagus nerve at the inferior ganglion of the vagus nerve, and the fibers from the cranial part are then distributed through the vagus nerve. Okay. And for this reason, the cranial part of accessory nerve is considered as a part of the along with the vagus nerve. Here you can see this is vagus nerve is also coming out through the jugular There is high chance of injury to the nerve and cannulation of internal to 
measure the pressure directly in the right atrium. of the shoulder and damage to the muscles may also result in asymmetrical neckline. So, spinal axis side of nerve damage. Here. Muscle has been reduced. This is inner delta side, and here is the trapezius is also lost its volume. Okay. We have the cranial nerve or hypoglossal nerve. It is motor. So spinal accessory nerve was only motor cranial nerve. Hypoglossal nerve is also uh, only motor, okay, but ninth cranial nerve, glossopharyngeal was a mixed nerve. So, it is a mainly motor nerve arises from the medulla at the junction of pyramid and olive, the rootlets are coming out, and nucleus is a hypoglossal nucleus, okay. So, what are the functions of this nerve? It provides Patient to the muscles of the tongue except the paraphoglossus muscle, which is the movement of the tongue. It is important for solving and articulation. It arises in the medulla and it leads the pulse to the glossal canal and descends in the structure. Internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve. Joint is the upper part of the C1 fibers. Here, this is the post of hypoglossal nerve. Okay. C1 fibers was joint, they are taking part in formation of the antha. So, it descends in the neck like structures with the structures like the internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and vagus nerve. That is over the carotid seal. And then passes forward on the side of the tongue. Here is the tongue passes forward on the side of the tongue and is forced by C1 fibers. Okay. And anterior branch is supplying the now to the thyroid muscle, muscular branch to the muscles of the tongue, that is intrinsic muscles of the tongue, and now to the geniohyoid muscle. So these are the types of this nerve. <coughs> See here, there is the hypoglossal nerve, C1 fibers are joining with the nerve, passes forward on the side of the tongue and supplying the intrinsic muscles of the trunk. Terminal nerve, fifth cranial So what is the clinical aspect? of the tongue to the affected side okay because opposite side of tongue muscles or healthy side of the tongue muscles will push the tongue to the affected side okay that's why the muscle nerve the patient is asked to stick out the tongue and the deviation is noted that deviation is present by the very and exhausted, so you have to determine the side which 
inside the tongue can it deviate if it, during taking out the tongue okay so it is 12 period so it is aquatic intrinsic muscles of the tongue is important important short note okay you prepare intrinsic muscles of the tongue Vegas and posterior to the medial longitudinal and fasciculus. This is the location. Anterior to the medial longitudinal and fasciculus. Medial is inferior complex and comes out between the pyramid and olive at the pre olivary sulcus and then passes laterally across the posterior cranial fossa. It is the backward space and it the cranium via the hypoglossal. Channel. Okay. And through myelofibrate muscle and enter the temporal region to supply the pulse of the tongue. the muscles of the extrinsic muscles, intrinsic muscles, extrinsic muscles are Intrinsic and extrinsic muscles are together helping in different uh, muscles supplied by the nerve. 
short note, very important short note. Okay. So you will come in the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve is example. And other movements such as the cheek and feeling for the pressure on the opposite side of the cheek may also be used. Okay. If you patient it will be dedicated to the affected side and it's less strength in pushing if the this nerve is paralyzed. Okay, so some muscles will also be paralyzed. Group of muscles affected side. Okay, tongue will be wasted if the hypoglossal nerve paralysis occurs, and fasciculation will be seen on the affected side. Any queries regarding this topic? Okay, so you prepare the spinal act generally spinal accessory. And the, all these three nerves can come as a short note. You prepare as a short note. Five marks question to prepare. You have to write all those things. Its origin, course, nuclei, where it supplies and its component. Okay. Any queries? Components are important. Components are also asked in your viva. During your grand viva table or during any bones viscera table, bones sorry, brain viscera table, you may be asked the components or supply of these three nerves. Okay. No, re, no queries regarding these three nerves. Okay, that's Next topic. And last, guys, please. This is going to be a five marks question for you. Straightforward. They will ask you this uh, uh, regarding this topic. This will be a direct five marks question for you. It is majorly asked because this is one of the topic that the students generally skip out while preparing for their examination. Okay. And the topic that we are going to discuss today is named as protein targeting or protein shorting. S-O-R-T-I-N-G, shorting. Okay. And the other name provided to that, the most common name is protein targeting. Can anyone out here just discuss or can brief, uh, uh, give a brief points or any discussion about what you understand by this term protein targeting. Shall I write it on board? Anyone? Anyone with any ideology that what protein targeting is all about? Protein shorting. Can anyone just with this term terminology? Last guy, that guy writing in that uh, something book. Yes, last one. Yes, what is protein targeting? What do you understand by this term? I'm not asking you for any definition or anything. Terminology, I'm just asking you to explain me what does this term means. Please. Targeting, or a target. What does targeting means? Anyone from the middle group? And why you people are sitting so far? God knows. That girl, side, writing something, anatomy, completing histology works. Yeah, what is targeting? That girl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. What is targeting? What, what do you understand by targeting? Hello? Anyone? Are, this, this cannot happen here. Either you have to be interactive with me, otherwise I'll just read out the PPT and I'll go. My class is done. This cannot happen. You don't know what is the meaning of targeting. This cannot happen. Please, no need of standing up. Just be there, be at your place and answer. Sorry? Okay, fine. You have, you have given the definition. That is okay. But I just wanted to know what you understand by this targeting. No one? Fine, you are right. I'm not saying you're wrong. To select a specific protein, okay, fine. Anything else? Anything else? And what is the meaning of sorting out? What do you understand by sorting? Please, be loud. To? To organize something. Nice. Very good. Anything else? Anything else? Anyone? I'm just asking the meaning of these words. That's it. Yes. Sorry? To take up the? Nice. Very nice. Okay. Very good. Anything else? See, things are coming up. Slowly, slowly. Anyone? 
to address okay to address specific enzymes she has went to enzymes fine nice all enzymes are protein except okay fine is that is that everything is that all whosoever has told whatever you people are right you are not wrong to specifically distinct or allow a certain protein that has to be set it for a different destination or to provide a proper destination to a protein or an enzyme that is called as targeting we are targeting a specific protein to certain organelle or to certain membrane of the organelles okay now i have a chalk let us see page one i have a chalk i have a small piece of chalk okay what what is your name yes what is your name Shub, shubhrudeep okay mr xyz i cannot hear you fine this chalk this chalk contains some information fine it contains some information i am targeting it to this guy fine this is what targeting means i have targeted that my chalk is being targeted for that guy now there is one more piece of chalk let us say what is your name mr xyz tha na zyx fine this is for you fine so there is a differential targeting of specific proteins or specific elements of the cell that has to be provided to certain specific areas or we can call it as organelles this is called as sorting sorry targeting now what the sorting means there are hundreds of proteins there are many 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 proteins inside the cell fine now which protein is going for certain area which protein is not going to that area which which part of that chalk went to that that guy which part of chalk went to that guy this is called as differentiation or this is called as sorting out there are bunches of protein out of that i take one protein for that destination i took another protein for that another destination that is called as sorting out is that clear now coming to my next query ha what i coming to my next query all of you might have heard about different sort of proteins and enzymes in that inside the cell like we talk about nucleus enzymes let it be dna polymerases pol1 pol2 pol3 you might have heard there are different proteins inside the nucleus of course but do the nucleus pro produces protein do the nucleus produces protein yes or no no way the protein is synthesized in the protein is synthesized in cytoplasm over the with the help of ribosomes with the help of ribosomes is that clear so all the proteins are getting synthesized in the cytoplasm they are not synthesized anywhere else there is an exception we are studying biochemistry it has got a chemistry part so there will be exception the exception is mitochondria because we know that mitochondria has got its own dna we call it as mitochondrial dna right so there are certain proteins which get synthesized or which are channeled out out of mitochondria or inside the mitochondria to some extent but if you talk about the 90% of the proteins and enzymes that get synthesized is majorly in the cytoplasm okay now have you thought about this thing that these all organelles have got different different proteins like nucleus has got rna polymerases dna polymerases and all fine uh, the lysosomes has got lys acid hydrolases they are enzymes so basically they are protein fine there are like uh, different other organelles there are peroxisomes are there there are different other organelles which have got different sort of enzymes but these all proteins or these all enzymes are prepared in the cytoplasm so how they are taken into this different organelle have you ever thought have you ever thought that if this protein is getting synthesized in the cytoplasm then how they are taken away to different organelles is my question valid or not anyone is my question valid yes or no my question is not valid or valid my question is valid do you think my question is valid all of you yes it is a valid question now to the answer if you provide the answer to this valid question the answer is nothing but protein targeting or protein sorting simple as it is is that clear so the protein that is getting synthesized in the cytoplasm later on if it is targeted or the protein that is made in the cytoplasm is made for certain other kind of organelle and we are channeling that protein to that specific organelle that process is called as protein targeting or we call that as protein sorting also yes or no is that clear is that clear now can anyone out of in this bunch of uh, you know this class can anyone just give me a definition of protein targeting in your language i'm not asking in sort of bookish language or anything no need of googling also anyone i told you what is actually protein targeting 
Anyone? In your language. Yes, last. Last girl. No need of standing up. You can just be comfortable with your, within your place and just answer. In your language. In your words. Please, go ahead. Anyone? She has given a good answer. But her medium is uh, not acceptable inside the classroom. The medium of answer is not acceptable. Anyone can just, you know, uh, translate it into English. What she has said, again I am saying in Hindi only. Unhone kaha hai ki kisi bhi protein, jab koi bhi protein jab wo synthesize hota hai, uska movement, uska translocation for a specific, kisi ek specific organelle ke liye, us movement ko, us translocation ko, hum protein targeting kehte hai. She is right. Absolutely she is right. Anyone can translate the same in English. Fine. She has added two more words. Let it be inside the cell, inside the cellular organelles or let it be outside the cell. There are certain proteins that come, comes out of the cell. Isn't it? Can you give me an example? Any protein that is secreted in the form of vesicles that comes out of the cell. That is not functioned inside the cell. Many are there. Insulin. It's a peptidal hormone. It's a peptide. It's a protein. Collagen. Isn't there? It is there or not? So there are many sort of proteins which are not targeted inside the cell. But rather they are packed into certain vesicles, fine, and they are moved out of the cell. This is also possible. Anyone else? Any further little more addition of words you can do? It's a very good discussion going on. I don't need that PPT also. If this discussion, be, uh, you know, continues. Anyone? Any better fine, you know, kind of words or, uh, you know, vocabulary you have? I know you people have a better vocabulary than me. Moon, anything? She's sleepy. Your proteins are not getting targeted properly. They should reach the brain as soon as possible. Anyone? Yes, please. Bolo, bolo. Fine. Targeting also means you are targeting certain cells. That's nice. Okay. That can be another neighboring cell also. One cell provides certain protein that goes to the neighboring cell. Very good. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Fine. Now, in this whole terminology, yes, I accept that it is a mechanism through which set of proteins are transported inside the cell into different organelles or into different endomembranes or membranes of the you know plasma membrane of membranes of the organelles or inside the organelles or they are also they can be transported outside the cell in the form of vesicles they are called as secretory proteins fine but in this whole terminology you have missed two points Point number one, did you thought that this protein that is being targeted to a specific cell occurs only when the protein is completely synthesized or the proteins are targeted when the protein is still undergetting synthesis. That means it is still attached to ribosome. There are two processes. One, the protein is completely synthesized, the peptide is fully completely you know, completely synthesized, it has detached from the ribosome, you have got a set of polypeptides. Now, this polypeptide has to be channeled into different area. Point number one, this can also happen. Other way, can, what can happen is, the protein is getting synthesized, it is still attached to the ribosome and the protein is being targeted. Ki bhai, ye jo protein ban raha hai, isko apne target kar liya hai, ye jayega XYZ ke paas. Is that clear? So there are two ways through which protein can be targeted or protein can be shorted out. Providedly, it has to be when the translation or when the protein synthesis is still continuing. Point number two, when the protein synthesis is completely done, is completed. You have got an entire set of length of polypeptide chain. So now how you are going to define? It is a mechanism. Can you repeat with me? Can you all repeat with me? It is a mechanism of transport of matured protein or the protein yet getting synthesized to different organelles of the cell or the membranes of different organelles inside the cell or the plasma membrane of the cell or outside the cell. When we talk about outside the cell, when the protein is getting thrown out of the cell, it has to be going in the form of vesicles. Yes or no? Yes or no? Fine. So this is all about protein targeting. Now, protein targeting has been classified, which we have given the definition, which we have given the definition, 
that is what either the protein can be targeted once the uh, translation process is completed or when the translation process is going on fine number one classification goes as when the translation is completed the ribosome has detached the chain of polypeptide that we call as post translational targeting what we call as post translational targeting is it clear post translation translation complete hone ke baad post to that is that clear now the second classification goes as co translational targeting what is that co c o co translational targeting what does it mean that the protein is yet getting synthesized is still under the process of synthesis it has not completely detached from the ribosome but there are certain targeting sequences which has targeted that the, this protein that is going to get synthesized will be going to the specific organelle will be going to the plasma membrane will be going to the membrane of this organelle or later maybe that can be secreted in form of acid that is called as co translational targeting is that clear is that clear now this is the basic classification dependent on this classification what we do that whenever we talk about post translational targeting there are certain cellular organelles that accept this proteins after the translation is completed there are certain cellular organelles that accepts the protein to be targeted once or while the process of translation is going there are certain organelles we have differentiated the organelles okay eta kaj kore na na hocche na ja baba e to holo so you can define see whether we were right please go through that whether we were right or not we were right what does it state that it is a mechanism by which cell transport proteins to the appropriate position inside the cell or outside of it fine we were right in other words the pathways by which proteins are sorted and transported to their proper cellular location are referred to as protein targeting or protein sorting so we were right where they can be targeted i have already told you they can be targeted to the inner space of any organelle they can be targeted to the membrane of the organelle intracellular membranes they can be targeted to the plasma membrane and they can be also targeted or transported outside the cell i just forgot about the history the history is quite important we will go to that basically there was a <coughs> physicist sorry a physiologist a very renowned physiologist called as blobel and he took a initiative with his all phd mates there were certain fellows who were doing phd under him he took a project to identify that why specific proteins are present in specific organelles why not dna polymerase is present in chloroplast let us see i know you have no uh, need of chloroplast i know i'm just giving an example why dna polymerase is not present in um, you know uh, kind of any other organelle peroxisomes let it be so he took this initiative in 1979 i guess yeah 1970 and later on his classmates or his phd mates not classmates phd mates identified that there are a certain signal there are certain set of sequences which explains that okay this protein is going to nucleus there are certain sequences present in the peptide length that is going to peroxisomes certain is going to mitochondria that was identified first by his phd students okay later on he worked on that he worked massively in this area and found out that there are certain specific signal peptides or there are specific signal sequences that are present majorly in the n terminal of a peptide length or a protein majorly they are present in the n terminal of a peptide remember this point i am going to highlight that later on fine there are certain signal sequences no if we talk about proteins we are not talking about mrnas or anything we are talking about proteins so what should be the signal sequences what should be they composed of ha huh? very good amino acid residues very good if we talk about proteins what do we have we have amino acids nothing other than that so there are certain specific signal sequences that explain that there are specific amino acids present in the n terminal present in the n terminal end of a peptide 
that act as a signal sequence that act as a signal sequence remember my point that this signal sequences vary from each other if a protein that is getting targeted to let us say mitochondria will be having different set of amino acids a protein that is getting targeted to nucleus will be having different set of amino acids or their arrangement may be different their positioning may be different is that clear this but there is an exception again the exception is that if any protein that is getting targeted towards peroxisomes the signal sequences are not found in n terminal they are found in c terminal this is the only exception otherwise if you talk about the entire set of proteins all the set of proteins have got signal sequences in the n terminal is that clear is that clear and the exception only exception is peroxide is that fine so blobel was the scientist or the physiologist who described that there are short sequences generally called as signal peptide or signal sequences that allows the targeting of that targets the protein to specific organelle let it be in the plasma membrane or let it be the membrane of intracellular organelles or let it be whenever it is going out so it is all decided by the signal peptides fine and for that he has been provided with nobel prize in physiology in 1999 is that clear कौन कौन पैदा हो गया था 1999 कौन कौन पैदा हो गया था 1999 तुम लोग कुछ करोगे ऐसा कैन यू पीपल डू यू थिंक लाइक दैट यू कैन डू दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग यू कैन गेट नोबेल प्राइज एनी वन ऑफ यू मत सोचो फिलहाल फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ फोकस करो ओके कमिंग टू व्हाट इज दैट सिग्नल सीक्वेंसेस आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट दीस आर शॉर्ट सीक्वेंसेस ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड स्पेसिफिकली और क्लासिफिक माने यू नो मेजरली इज प्रेजेंट एट द एंड टर्मिनल बट देयर इज एक्सेप्शन दैट इज पेरोक्सिसोम्स if any protein getting targeted to peroxisomes the signal sequence is present towards the c terminal okay they are positively charged hydrophilic region is up near the n terminal when i talk about positively charged what do you think the amino acid has to be if i i said that generally it is seen that these amino acid sequences are a length of 10 to 15 amino acids a generally 10 to 15 amino acids and generally they carry positive charge then what sort of amino acid has to be there acidic mm. no anyone what sort of amino acid it should carry anyone basic amino acids can you name them hey baba very good arginine yes very good lysine anything else anything else to some extent leucine also to some extent to some extent i'm not saying completely majorly these amino acid sequences are in form of lysine arginine arginine lysine there is a repeated sequence of lysine arginine they act as a signal peptide okay whenever see <clears throat> as i classified you that what are the signal sequences they are this sort of sequences that are present in n terminal to some extent they are also present in c terminal but the only exception is peroxisomes where we see the protein getting targeted is having signal peptides at the c terminal but there is one more thing interestingly the proteins that are getting targeted towards nucleus where well, the protein that are getting targeted towards the nucleus have their signal sequences in a unrepeated manner stretch patches of signal peptides fine and these signal peptides that are present in between not at the terminal end but in between the entire stretch of peptide they the generally they generally convey hydrophobic they have hydrophobicity in their nature they are made up of hydrophobic amino acids huh? now the question comes sir if the peptide if the entire length of peptide has got the signal sequences not at the terminal end but in between somewhere how the signal sequences are going to get read out how we are going to read any idea you got my question you got my question no what i said that signal sequences are generally terminal by nature either it is present at the n terminal end or it is present at the c terminal end fine that's what i have told there are certain proteins which are targeted to nucleus do have their signal sequences between not at the terminal end but in between the peptide chain got my question so how this in between patches we call them as targeting patches we call them as targeting patches they are present in patches patch form थोड़ा सा यहाँ फिर थोड़ा दूर और चल गया फिर थोड़ा सा यहाँ पे सिग्नल सीक्वेंस फिर थोड़ा सा और चल गया दूर तो फिर थोड़ा सा यहाँ पे तो दीज आर पैचेज ऑफ सिग्नल सीक्वेंसेज दे आर प्रेजेंट इन बिटवीन बट नॉट एट द टर्मिनल एंड दे स्पेसिफिकली 
inherit this for the proteins that are getting transported to the nucleus. Now, how the cell recognizes? If it is in the terminal end, it is easy to be recognizable. It is easy for the terminal end to read for the cell or the transporters or whatever thing. We will talk about that later on. That is easy for them, for the proteins to read the terminal sequences. But if the sequences are present in between the peptide, then how they are going to read? Because once the protein is formed, it is added upon by chaperons. Yes or no? For the proper folding. Yes or no? Right? So, once the protein is formed, immediately they convey or themselves into a proper folding stature. So, how the patches are going to be identified? Anyone? Tumare paas ek paper hai. Tumne paper ko kar diya hai fold. Thik hai? Aur us paper ke beech mein, tumare premika ne tumhe lik ke bheja hai kuch. Thik hai? Tumhe usse dekhna hai. Na dekhe man nahi bhar raha hai. To tum kya karoge? Kya karoge? Paper ko unfold karoge tabhi na dikhega. Ki upar se hi dikhne lagega. Nahi na? You have to unfold the paper. Fine. So, while you are unfolding, what does it mean in terms of proteins? Anyone? The proteins initially to get their signal patches read by the specific proteins in the membrane the proteins has or have the proteins or the peptide has to be unfolded they are supposed to undergo denaturation is that clear is that clear so this happens majorly in case of nucleus targeted proteins if the nucleus targeted proteins are not having their signal sequences at the terminal end they are having their signal sequences in the form of patches. Yes or no? Are hi na bolo. Clear hai? See, what does it state that signal peptide? It says that after a protein has reached its destination, the signal peptide is generally cleaved by a signal peptidase. I'll give a beautiful example for this. And so most of the mature proteins do not contain signal peptide. Rem who of you remembers collagen synthesis? Who of you remember collagen synthesis? Be fast. Anyone? Pre-pro-alpha chain, yes or no? Signal peptides are removed, converts into pro-alpha chain. The pro-alpha chain coils around some more pro-alpha chains, later on forms pre-collagen, yes or no? That is vitally called as tropocollagen. That goes out, you remember? You remember? So when you are seeing a mature collagen, are you seeing the signal peptides or the signal peptides? No. Once the matured collagen is sent out of the cell, the signal, the terminal peptides are cutted off. They are removed. Yes or no? Let us talk about insulin. It has got a signal peptide. See, I was talking about patches. Just now I told you about patches, right? Signal patches. Insulin is the best example of uh, explaining uh, this answer. That what is signal patches? You have got A chain, B chain. You have got a terminal N signal peptide also. Apart from that, you have got a C peptide, yes or no? Yes or no? C peptide is removed. So, whenever you are seeing a mature insulin, does it contain C peptide? No. So, C peptide acts as a signal patch. Is that clear? While most of the signal peptides are found at the end, I have already discussed. Unlike signal peptides, signal patches are composed of amino acid residues that are discontinuous in the primary sequence but become functional when folding brings them together on the protein surface. Point to be noted over here. Whenever we talk about protein or targeting patches, I told you that targeting, targeting patches are made up of hydrophobic amino acids, fine? So the stability of the hydrophobic amino acid is brought only when the folding is done, fine? But to read out those patches for, for allowing the entry of those specific proteins into nucleus, we need to unfold, we need to denature. But the stability of the protein containing signal patches in between their stability is increased with the help of fold. Is that clear? This is what I have told already about the classification. Nucleus, as we know, mRNA is produced by transcription. Ribosomes in the cytosol is responsible for the production of the protein. Fine. They are later on targeted into two different areas. If it is a complete, completed protein, that is called as post-translational. Did I told you this? Yes or no? I told you about this classification. Now, in this classification, what you are supposed to remember is which are the organelles that supports post-translational, uh, you know, targeting or they support co-translational targeting. Please, you have to remember this. Is that clear? Can you see? If it is a completed protein that is provided by post-translational targeting or transport, the targeted organs, organelles are cytosol, nucleus, mitochondria, plastid, peroxisomes. If you talk about plants, chloroplast also includes, is included in that. 
please remember that fine so if we are targeting a protein specifically to mitochondria specifically to nucleus the protein has to be targeted while the protein is getting synthesized or once the protein synthesis is over the answer should be if you are supposed to target certain protein to mitochondria or nucleus of the cell the transport has to occur while the protein is getting synthesized or the protein synthesis is over that last call yes ki bollam bol to ki bollam ekhon bol bol ki bollam ami bangla bolchi to basically to the nucleus or to the mitochondria it has to be transported after the translation is over or while the translation is going on simple okhane lekha ache ghuriye jiggesh korchi Apart from that, if you go to the secondary classification that we call as co-translational transport, which is generally responsible for those proteins targeted generally outside the cell, majorly outside the cell, where we play uh, Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies plays a very important role. So, if you talk about co-translational targeting, the first example it should come to your mind is Golgi bodies. Yes or no? is that clear or any uh, you know uh, any protein that has to be targeted outside the cell that undergoes co-translation modification while co-translation modification sorry co-translation trans uh, targeting what does it mean that the targeting of the, the transportation of protein occurs only when the protein is still under synthesis yes or no clear mechanism one that is what it is post translational transport i have named it as mechanism 1 fine it is it is it generally occurs in the cytosol and it occurs only when the protein has already got synthesized that is called as post translation okay you should remember the names as an example nucleus mitochondria peroxisomes are delivered by this process please they will ask you this in short question sorry in uh, uh, this is also asked for multiple choice question mechanism 2 that generally occurs now where the protein synthesis is occurring rer rough endoplasmic reticulum that has got ribosomes it is still attached to that fine and that is called as co translational transport also called as secretory pathway that is what i am calling it as from the beginning time that whenever we talk about the proteins that are targeted to neighboring cells they are transported in the help with the help of vesicles in the form of vesicles the vesicles are secreted out that is why we call them as secretory pathway also okay 30% of the protein are shorted by this secretory pathway that is quite vital for us including secreted proteins residents of endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes and integral membrane proteins see cytosolic protein targeting that means it is post translational targeting and it is happening only when the translation is covered the entire translation process is completed fine i have already discussed that whenever a protein has got synthesized it has got certain signal sequences either it can be at the n terminal either it can be in the c terminal some extent to some extent they also have they can be present in form of patches in between the entire length of peptide fine yes or no so a protein carrying signal peptide we always call that in with the help of a terminology is there we call them as a pre protein what we call them as insulin you remember insulin you remember what is the first basic form of a completed protein insulin pre pro is that clear so any form of protein in which the signal peptides are still there we call them as pre pro after the cell dependent on the signal sequences after the cell has localized or has transported the protein into specific compartment of the cell the signal sequences are removed with the help of signal peptides that protein is called as a native protein so pre protein minus signal peptides or signal sequences is equal to is equal to native protein is that clear is that clear important now thoda sa hum log detail mein aate hain how the proteins are targeted to mitochondria there are certain transporters point to be noted over here 
mitochondria is a very vital organelle in terms of it has got two different membranes. Yes or no? Outer membrane, inner membrane. And they are segregated with the help of intramembrane space. Yes or no? So if a protein has to be targeted to mitochondria, the difficulty is more. Why? Because it has to cross two gates. It has to cross two barriers. Now, not all the proteins are destined for the matrix of the mitochondria. Some of the proteins are destined for the inner membrane. Some of the proteins are destined, you know, destined for the outer membrane. Some are destined for the inner membrane space. Some are destined for the matrix. So there is a difference. How this differentiation is maintained? With the help of certain another proteins, with the help of certain another transporters, okay, and those transporters are named as these are named as protein translocators. What they are named as protein translocators. They are generally multi subunit protein. Have you heard about multi subunit or multi enzyme complexes? Have you heard about? PDH complex, right? Yes. Anything in the TC cycle similar to PDH complex? Alpha, keto, glutarate, dehydrogenase. Yes. That is a bhai bhai of PDH complex. The only difference between these two enzymes, PDH complex and alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase, is that in PDH complex, the first enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase, and the second, and in the second case, for alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, the first enzyme is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. That's it. The only difference. Otherwise, remaining everything is same. Fine. So, like that, these proteins, these protein translocators that are responsible to translocate a protein into different part of a mitochondriality, be inner membrane, outer membrane, intramembrane space or matrix, they require certain proteins that are called as protein translocators, and they are multi subunit complexes. There's a multi subunit proteins made up of different, different parts or different, you know, constituents. The first one says as Tom, classification as Tom, team 22, team 23 and the last one is OXA. Tom stands for translocator of outer membrane, simple. Tom stands for translocator of outer membrane, team stands for Translocator of inner membrane. Simple. Fine. And the OXA stands for? OXA stands for? What should be the full form of OXA then? Anyone? Team stands for inner membrane. Tom stands for outer membrane. Then what is OXA? It translocates or allows the insertion of inner membrane proteins. There are certain classifications apart from TIM or TIM. There are certain proteins which specifically relies or which allows the transport of proteins into the inner membrane. There is a subclass. You can call it as a subclass. Okay. Is that clear? Apart from that, Team 23 being a translocator of inner membrane is also responsible to translocate the protein into matrix. So whatever matrix enzymes or proteins that you see, the all the enzymes except one of Krebs cycle are present in matrix. Yes or no? All the enzymes of TC cycle except one is present in matrix. What is the exception? Succinate dehydrogenase. Succinate dehydrogenase is hanging from the inner membrane and facing towards the matrix. But it is not a cellular enzyme or it is not a functional enzyme of matrix. Okay. Now, protein targeted to nucleus. As I told you that it has to carry some signal sequences and these signal sequences decides that where it is going to get translocated. So like that, the proteins that are going to be translocated to the nucleus has got certain specific signals. We call them as NLS, nuclear localization sequences. Please remember these terms, NLS. There are many drugs that specifically work on that. 
it has got a very high importance in pharmacokinetics and pharmaco uh, pharmacology uh, basically clear please remember these terms nls and all sort of there are different drugs targeting these uh, transporters this nuclear localization sequence is basically made up of 4 to 8 amino residues and that has to be basic i told you this i told you about that the amino acid should be carrying positive charge most of the most of the time it is seen that the amino acids are in form of arginine and lysine they are repeated sequences of arginine and lysine fine now <clears throat> this entire protein targeted to the nucleus having NLS or nuclear localization sequences are allowed to come inside the nucleus with the help of a, another protein that is called as nuclear pore, that is called as nuclear pore. So nuclear pore decides what is the signal sequence, fine. Apart from that, these nuclear pore complexes, there are multiple units of nuclear pore complexes, have got a specific protein that reads the NLS that is called as nucleophorines. Kitna kuch bol diya dekho. NLS is present in peptide. Nuclear pore complexes is present in the nuclear membrane. Fine. Who reads the new NLS provided in the peptide sequence? That is rated by nucleophorines. So nucleophorines read that. You know, allows the entry of protein inside the nucleus through the nuclear pore complexes. Is that clear? If, for example, there are certain nuclear proteins like in proteins and RAN, very targeted proteins again, lot of targeting therapies and lot of things, new new drugs are coming out to target this sort of proteins. If you talk about in proteins, they are responsible to import or internalize any protein. If we talk about exporting, that are responsible to export out or send out any protein out of nucleus. Clear? Peroxisomal transport, the only thing that I have told you to remember is, this is an exception. Generally, all the signal peptides are present in the end terminal, whereas if it is a peroxisomal targeted protein, the signal sequences will be in C terminal. Is that clear? And they should be rich in serine, lysine, leucine. Repeated sequence of this three amino acid, serine, lysine, leucine. Yes or no? Fine. Coming to mechanism two, that is pore translational transport. There are four steps. I will explain individually. The signal sequence. Fine. The SRP, that is called the signal recognition particle. The SRP receptor and the translocon. Remember these points. Fine. I am going to a diagram. I will. I am not going to turn it back. Remember these points. There are four steps, signal recognition sequence or signal sequence, signal recognition particle, SRP receptor and the translocal. <coughs> Follow the diagram. At the top corner, at the top side, you can see a ribosome attached to the mRNA. Yes or no? Yes or no? Later on, you can see that the polypeptide chain is getting synthesized from the ribosome, a small chain. A small chain, yes or no? It has got an end terminal, yes or no? It will get an end terminal. That end terminal has got a signal sequence. Let us assume that it has got a signal sequence. And now, is the peptide getting targeted right now is completely synthesized? Yes or no? No, right? That's why we are calling this mechanism as co-transport, co-translational transport. Fine. The protein is not yet synthesized. During that only, during the process only, we are targeting it to certain complex, a certain organelles. The moment the first signal sequences comes out in the from the ribosomal complex, a molecule is there that is called as SRP, signal recognition particle that binds to the signal sequences present in the short chain of polypeptide. Can you see there? It, it binds in such a way that this SRP has got two binding areas, one for the signal sequences, another for the ribosome. So it binds all together. It binds both. During the binding of SRP, 
provided to the ribosome and the signal sequence present in the polypeptide chain. The translation halts. The protein synthesis halts. Important process. This is a checkpoint. This is how the cell decides that okay, this protein is going to Golgi body. This protein is going to get transported with the help of vesicles. This is the checkpoint. Fine. So, this SRP bound to the ribosome and the signal sequences are brought to a receptor called as SRP receptor, signal recognition particle receptor that is present in the rough endoplasmic membrane. The moment SRP binds with the alpha subunit of the SRP receptor, the translation begins. The translation begins. Fine. Once the SRP binded to the SRP receptor allows the translation to begin, another one more protein comes in play that is called as translocone. That is called as translocone. Translocone is nothing but a pore, a hole. It's a pore that allows the internalization of advancing polypeptide chain. Can you see? The polypeptide chain enters. Is that clear? And the translocone is not always open. The translocone opens up only when the SRP binds with the SRP receptor. Fine. So once the polypeptide chain is internalized, the translation keeps on going, the entire protein length is produced and the entire polypeptide chain is provided inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum for further modification. The first initial modification that occurs in rough endoplasmic reticulum is the signal peptides are removed by, with the help of enzyme called as signal peptidases. Is that clear? Is that clear? So this is co-translational modification. The last part comes as very important for you, generally comes in the form of multiple choice questions and also to some extent they might, might confuse you, they may ask you about these deficiencies. But you may write the wrong answer. Regarding how? Like how it is possible? Because, uh, the disorders associated with protein targeting. The first due to defect in mitochondrial targeting sequence. Very important. Primary hyperoxaluria. Primary hyperoxaluria type 1. Have you read about it? Now why it is happening? See, there is an enzyme called as AGT. Alanine glycoxylate transaminase type 1 that is generally peroxisomal by nature and that is present in hepatocytes. But if there is a problem, any mutation or any change in the signal sequence where this enzyme or this protein AGT has to come into peroxisome but let us say it went to mitochondria. Now what happens? There will be a deficiency of this enzyme in the peroxisome. Because of that, there will be a, there will be no conversion of glycoxylate. Fine. As a result of that, they will start accumulating. Glyoxylate will start accumulating in the blood. They will convert themselves into oxalates. This oxalate will combine with calcium. They will form calcium salts. These calcium salts are responsible for renal calculi seen in hyperoxaluria type 1. The renal stones, what we see in case of this condition is because of the formation of calcium oxalates due to deficiency of that. And why this is happening? This is happening because of mistargeting or targeting error. That can be because of any mutation. Is that clear? Next one. PDS deficiency. You all know, sir, PDS deficiency. Have you heard? Hemolytic anemia. We all know. Fine. PDS deficiency is one of the most commonest seen disorder due to mistargeting of protein. Most commonest. It was recently found out, by the way. It was recently discovered, but most common. <coughs> Why this is happening? Due to deficiency, there is a mutation in that protein transporter that is called as NMTS. You can see. Uh, you can see there are certain TOM complex I told you about the 
टॉम कॉम्प्लेक्स टीम कॉम्प्लेक्स टीम ट्वेंटी टू टीम ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑक्सा आई टोल्ड यू ना सो दीज आर ऑल ट्रांसपोर्टर्स दैट अलाउज द प्रोटीन इन साइड द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया सो इफ एनी म्यूटेशन टेक्स प्लेस इन प्रोवाइडेड दिस प्रोटीन दिस ट्रांसलोकेटर्स दिस प्रोटीन ट्रांसलोकेटर दिस एंजाइम्स प्रोटीन कैनॉट कम इन साइड द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया द मोस्ट कॉमनेस्ट आउट ऑफ इट इज पीडीएच और पायरोवेट डिहाइड्रोजनस कॉम्प्लेक्स इज दैट क्लियर If I talk about disorders due to defect in peroxisomal matrix protein import, in whole total we call it as Gelbergers spectrum. Out of which the most commonest is Gelbergers syndrome. I think you are aware of it. You know what is Gelbergers syndrome? Very common question, short question. Another is neonatal adrenoleukodystrophy. They do do ask this thing. The last one is infantile Refsum's disease. The least severe. This is called as Zellweger spectrum. Now, most common is symptom of Zellweger spectrum. Do you know what happens in Refsum's disease? What happens in Refsum's disease? Anyone? Accumulation of what? The most common is symptom that we see in case of accumulation of long chain fatty acids in the peroxisomes most common is symptom is that clear all of you so many times i told you to write everything and read if you don't do that thing you will not remember now this will be a spotter or a, it will be given as a viva so this type of cards will be given the questions will not be the same but in this slide whatever is written here I have just projected, and everything is you know will not match also. So there will be changes, but the basic concept is like this. The first, this is the first case. What is your diagnosis? Diabetic ketoacidosis. As already it has been explained well, all the regions, blood glucose normal value, it is more than significantly higher than. A, it is normally, normally I repeat, blood sugar is not written. It is written as plasma glucose. Blood sugar is a very loosely used term. Till doctors say blood sugar. If you make from finger pricking, from the whole blood, that is blood glucose, and the, in the laboratory, what is measured? Measured is from plasma that you have estimated. That is plasma glucose. So all the interpretation as per WHO criteria are based on plasma glucose. Okay, the plasma glucose level is 10 to 15 percent higher than whole blood glucose. If that you remember, blood pH normal value you must remember range. Here it is low. Bicarbonate normal value you must remember because it could not compensate. This is an uncompensated case, so it is a frank case of diabetic ketoacidosis. Why it has happened? Because Rosetta test is positive because acid ketone bodies has been formed. And number three, four is Benedict test. I have explained to you in detail what is the renal threshold, what is TMG. When it will be exceeded, then the renal tubules will not be able to absorb, and urine will appear. The differentiating point has a catch question. Those who will be able to answer to this question, he will be asked what is the difference between starvation ketoacidosis and diabetic ketoacidosis. You have to tell this difference. Now, is it to to be older? Is it yes sir? Is it yes sir? Is it starvation ketoacidosis? What will happen? What will happen if it is a starvation ketoacidosis? I follow. If it is a case of starvation ketoacidosis, due to the ketoacidosis, in in both the conditions, either in diabetic or in starvation, in both the conditions, ketoacidosis will be there. One is really poverty in appearance, that is diabetes. One is really po poverty in uh, poor condition itself. Bolo, kitchen change hai, bro? Yeh the starvation kitchen series is noy karna hai ta? Bolo, dar ye bolo. What 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 will be the picture if it is a case of starvation kitchen series? Uh, blood glucose level will be less than normal level. And what other abnormality will be there? Huh? 
వాట్ విల్ బి అదర్ అబ్ నంబర్ ఇన్ దిస్ రిపోర్ట్ పై ఒకరు కిటియా సిటీ సిటీ వచ్చి స్టార్ట్ సింగ్ కిటియా సిటీ యాక్ట్ ఆ పారామీటర్ చేంజ్ అవ్వ బెలీ డి టెస్ట్ విల్ బి నెగటివ్ ఇక్కడ గ్లూకోజ్ లెవెల్ దే ఎక్కువ మేగా చే ఏమో జనపద మునరకపోతే ఇఫ్ దర్ ఇస్ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ హైపోక్లైసిమియా ఫర్ ఫోర్ ఆన్ పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ టైం దేన్ ఓన్లీ డయాబెటిక్ కిటియా సిటీ విల్ ఒక సర్ దిస్ ఐ స్టార్ట్ సింగ్ కిటియా సిటీ విల్ ఒక విల్ ఒక నా బాడీ విల్ ట్రై టు మెయింటైన్ through glycogenolysis through new glycogenesis when the entire reserve will be depleted then only hypoglycemia will occur remember whatever classes i have taken all the classes will be re- required in your clinical classes i deliberately i have concentrated on the clinically relevant topics so remember everything you remember the diabetes i have taken i have taken ogdt class also and explain in detail and nothing will be required in your mbbs course practical aspects i have covered even by giving case example second case so first point is comment on the report as you have seen earlier this case also p3 t4 t say look at this thing forget about cholesterol cholesterol may be given or may not be given cholesterol hello may be normal also but deliberately it has been given since this is a case of it is a common belief that hyperlipidemia occurs in or hypercholesterolemia occurs in uh, primary hypothyroidism that's why this figure has been given normal cholesterol level again ncp guidelines you must remember what is normal cholesterol normal triglyceride level ncp guidelines national cholesterol education program guidelines you write down this you remember this will be asked what is the value of hdl ldl vldl hdl ldl cholesterol triglyceride uh, this level you have to remember and the criteria ada criteria of 2024 and who criteria of 2022 are the same for fasting impaired uh, this normal impaired and over diabetes fasting pp and age bound c age bound c is today everybody is talking about age bound c so examiners might ask you what is the normal age bound c what are level what are the, what is the normal level and uh, what is the clinical relevance and what is the difference between fasting pp and h1c in a given gravity question and if you cannot understand i, I can take one more class no issue uh, but blood sugar blood glucose level and diabetes you must remember so what is the probable diagnosis hypothyroidism if you write if you cannot write uh, primary secondary at least write hypothyroidism don't write hyperthyroidism then the it will be zero hypothyroidism means it will be almost 80% mark basically you are correct but those who will be writing primary hypothyroidism obviously he will be getting 100% because now he knows the actual problem if you do if you are in a doubt don't write primary or secondary write the diagnosis of hypo or hyper okay that means your concept is at least clear you could diagnose because the treatment part of both are different of either primary will be basically replacement therapy a secondary you require a surgical treatment because this will be due to usually tumor so pituitary is located on thinner bone so from brain it cannot be approached transthenoidal approach through nose pituitary gland is excess and this is removed if there is any tumor okay explain the cause of increased tsh someone should volunteer that is a catch question and you must understand this thing so like ek jon ke bolo ek jon ke bolo ekta kotha bole dilam jore bolo shunte parbe bolo thik level of pp t4 will increase pituitary gland so it will occur it will not increase will stimulate the pituitary, pituitary gland more tsh, more TSH more in an attempt to compensate basically to raise t3 and t4 level so the what is the function of tsh to cause increased production of t3 and t4 how by doing hypertrophy and hyperplasia of thyroid trophs okay so pituitary will try initially to increase by raising the tsh level now in the initial phase t3 t4 will be normal because it is not trying to compensate now there is a limit suppose there is a 100 t3 100 t4 you need forget and 100 tsh is this is normal level 
Now T3 has decreased. See, again, I am remembering the 80 percent of T4 is produced by the thyroid gland and 20 percent of T3 is produced by the thyroid. Peripherally, T4 is converted into T3 and T3 is the active form. See, earlier I told you the gland is primarily involved. That is primary. If pituitary is used to be involved, that is called secondary. And if hypothalamus is disease, that is tertiary. Now, these two terminology has been removed and they, there is a classification of primary and central. So, you all concentrate on primary and central. Don't write that uh, because you, the, this term has been obsolete. What has happened basically from the thyroid gland, if there is a decreased production of T, T4 and T3, uh, there will be stimulation by the TSH and also TRH. Because TSH secretion is under regulation of by the hypothalamus through TRH. So TRH has to be secreted, it will stimulate the pituitary and more TSH will be formed. So the less the T3 and T4, the more the TSH level and TRH level. Now there will be one stage when compensation will not be able to sufficient, at that time it will decrease. And the more the decrease, more the level of TSH. Okay? So the higher the TSH means a gland is maximally stimulated, uh, perhaps it could not compensate. And the moment you give a thyroxine, ultraxine, there will be reverse feedback. And if you give T3, T4 orally, T3, one thyroxine if you give orally, then this level will increase in the blood and that will inhibit that there is no more requirement of TSH. It is already there in the system. So if you see a very high TSH level, maybe the thyrotroph in the pituitary has undergone severe hypertrophy and hyperplasia to produce as much TSH as it can. So explain the cause of increased TSH, you must be able to know that feedback system. If you can't understand, again read thing, read the, from the books. If you cannot understand, again I come. No issue. One or add one or two, three, four, five, four, five students that come. It will not be a matter of any issue. I will be present in the next week also. So, what are the clinical features? Clinical features are very vague. I am telling you, there is no specific symptom for hypothyroidism. There are patients comes with lethargy, tiredness, constipation, decreased appetite, hair loss, skin thickening, weight gain, menstrual problems, I mean endless uh, I mean symptoms. And there is no specificity, except one thing, one is water. So I have shown you in the theory picture that how water looks like if you look at the gland, of age you are making a habit that you look at the gland, neck person, this is the exposed person, and the moment somebody degulates and you look at the look at that position below the cricoid cartilage. Don't confuse with the thyroid cartilage. It is below there, and you will see butterfly separate, or there will be nodule which will be moving. That means the gland is increased. And why gland is increased? Because again the gland is that means disease. Okay. So, you can see a goiter also. Goiter can lead to hypothyroidism, goiter can lead to hyperthyroidism also. Any enlargement of thyroid gland is called goiter. It can be euthyroid also. Because during one stage, well, this, stage this has occurred, now body has stabilized that thing. So, T3, T4 will be normal, TSH will be normal, but there will be an increased gland. That means something, some insult was there, body has tried to compensate it, so that still enlargement is there that enlargement will remain, okay? So, what other tests are done in this condition? Usually, this normally, where I told you in the theory class also, when the iodine, iodine is an essential element for production of thyroid uh, hormones. So, we don't have any iodine deficiency because today we are all taking iodine salt. Oh, we don't have any iron deficiency. Whatever goiter we are seeing today is not an iron deficient goiter, unlike Easter years before 1985 or before 1990, when iodized salt was not available on, uh, throughout the, I mean, in the, in the market. We used to take uh, salt in the, 
uh, given in the rack with non alloy salt. So during that time alloy deficiency could be possible, but now it is not. Where there is an iodine deficient in the geochemically in the soil, you will get a gutter that is iodine deficient gutter. And when iodine is present in uh, adequate amount, the gutter is usually an iodine sufficient gutter, and it, this uh, cause of the iodine sufficient gutter is autoimmune. That means some antibody autoimmunity has occurred against the thyroid gland itself, it, against it one of its antigen. So, common antigen is anti PPO, thyroxine peroxidase. So, that is basically oxidizing that iodine, that TPO antibody, that against the TPO there is an antibody production. So, that antibody will react to the TPO. So, that TPO will cause, the, there will be immune reaction and because of the immune reaction there will be inflammatory swelling. So, anti-TPO antibody is the one parameter you write down and it is routinely done. When a case of hypothyroidism is presented, anti-TPO antibody is measured and this level will be high. In this case, it will be high because the disease is quite advanced, T4 level is low. Second thing is that you can do an anti thyroglobulin also. Again, it will cause damage. Third one is lipid. There will be alteration of the lipid metabolism. So, cholesterol, triglyceride also you check it. And fourth one will be diabetes. The severe, uh, the, the, where there is it, any incidence of diabetes also there because this is an endocrine disease. So, it's autoimmune disease. There is a possibility that autoimmune mechanism has also destroyed the pancreas to some extent, it is a possibility, not always associated. But with hyperthyroidism, there will be an increase, decreased tolerance of glucose and usually there will be a diabetes and that diabetes will be cured, that is called a secondary diabetes mellitus. I, I explained this thing in the theory class also. Okay, what other tests will be done? anti tpo antibody. This you must tell. Second, uh, one more question, anti thyroglobulin antibody and lipid profile also. It is a good thing. 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 Okay? It is a good thing. 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 Urine dipstick time of urinous corresponding protocolum, I have told you that in the Benedict test, all the reducing sugars will be present, positive. Even some ascorbic acid, vitamin C I have shown you, and some drugs are also can give a false positive reaction. It is not a specific test. So, glucose oxidase impregnated strip, strip, I mean these are available. Anybody can pass urine directly on this strip or it can be just dipped into the urine. So, you can see in the change in the color. If there is a glucose presence in the glucose, that will be positive. See, go, 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 child with cataract, first diagnosis will make galactosemia. Child with cataract, why not? Cataract occurs in the older age group, usually more than 50, 50 more than 60, 70 also. It's not an usual feature. Child with cataract, First diagnosis in the question, galactosemia. And they uh, think something, uh, first concentrate on that thing and rule out whether something else is not there. Okay. So here, uh, you, you see inability to see the objects clearly because lens to open. Eye examination will cataract. If you have a radius positive, you can see the blood glucose is a feature. But it will not occur always. But this is one feature I can tell you. I am telling you. You must know why blood glucose level is low. You read it. Whether it is positive or negative, you must know why blood glucose level is low. You read it. Whether it is positive, can you? 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 You can't have a positive follow. The diabetes senator. Galactose is positive. There is a. Benedict test. Benedict test. 
whether galactose will give a positive magnetic test or not. Bola. All monosaccharides having a free aldehyde or free ketone group, all disaccharides which are having a free alkyl except sucrose. Remember, all monosaccharides which are having a free aldehyde or free ketone group will give a positive result. Galactose is a monosaccharide. So, therefore, galactose will give a positive blood sugar. And out of the three trisaccharides, lactose, maltose, and sucrose, sucrose is a non reducing sugar because it does not have a free aldehyde or free ketone group. That is bound once by glycosidic linkage. Remember that thing. Okay? So, because galactose is positive, galactose, why galactose, galactose has appeared in the urine? Why galactose has appeared in the urine? Lactose could have been a Urinic is an asset. The mechanism of glucose very easy in diabetes. Same mechanism. There is a limit. There is a galactosemia. So galactose level is increased in the blood. That has been filtered by the kidney and that is appearing in the urine. What is the process of diabetes? Galactosemia. How do you explain cataract formation in this case? Uh, accumulation of dalcitol. That sorbitol pathway you must remember. And what will be the case in the case of diabetes? That is sorbitol. The, the, this, this pathway you remember? Polyol pathway to Mudragwe, aldol is directed. A glucose to get sorbitol to you have, and sorbitol is an osmotically active substance. And in diabetes, in diabetes, because of the excess glucose, sorbitol is produced by the lens fibers, lens uh, cells, and it accumulates this an osmotically active substance, and that causes increased accumulation of water, not only in lens, but every in every cell. And that is the cause of complications of diabetes. So, if you regulate the blood sugar glucose level, then this orbital formation will not be there, so complication will be less. That is the basic fundamental mechanism of damage and complications in diabetes. Sorbitol formation, and in the same way, galactitol or dulcitol is formed in the galactosemia case. A pathway to as a key cause, for the mother cause, the jiggers could be equal. At least eight a bulb, but here galactose one phosphate urinal transfer, urinal transfer, eight a bulb, be bulb. Tar porta bulb, galactokinin. A yes, it is jiggers could be. It is a league, Halakor Mugosoka, Bermuda Lekase, Halakor Purbe. Sudumurabe, a path taken to by directional path. Adult charbochor pore mota moti ei yeta chula jay eta dorkar pore dakho glucose UDP glucose ke UDP galactose hoye hoye jay. Shajino baby the problem ta hoye jay. Ei jonne ei dakho question ta dakho. How will you explain the cataract formation through dulcitol formation and that is an osmotically active substance because excess galactose cannot be metabolized. So that will be formed in the uh, conversion is to uh, dulcitol through sorbitol pathway, write down that pathway, and that will increase osmotically active, will cause formation. Why will you confirm the diagnosis? Suspicion has a subpicture, has a manla. If you confirm the diagnosis, it will be very difficult because the baby is not going to be dead. If the galactosine urinal is transferred to the deficit, the treatment is not going to be off, it will be off, it will be off, it will be off. So this is a rare disease, but uh, there will be severe problem with jaundice and there will be death also. So how will you confirm? Sir, let's talk about galactose mass of blood. Difficult to talk about galactose one phosphate in erythrocyte is measured. Factor parameter. Second, which is galactic galactose galactose urinal transfer or galactose kinase? This enzyme to measure for which one? Or constant gene take a mutation as a kinetic character. Constant gene mutation as a kinetic. Well, it a prenatal diagnosis for the Bachata Mar Petace, 
একটা লাইকার এমনিও নিতে পারে সেখান থেকে এমনিও সেল ইউজ করলে নিয়ে সেখান থেকে সেল পাওয়া গেলে সেই সেলগুলো ফিটাল সেলই সেই ফিটাল সেল থেকে করা যেতে পারে সেখানে আমি যদি জেনেটিক স্ক্রিনিং করি তা জিনের ডেফিসিয়েন্সি যদি পেয়ে যাই আমি ওই গ্যাল জিনটা নেই বা গ্যাল জিনটা মিউটেটেড বা গ্যালাক্টো কাইন্ডের জিনটা নেই তাহলে তো বেসিক্যালি এটা গ্যালাক্টো কাইন্ডে যাবে গ্যালাক্টো সিমিয়ার হবে ওকে এটা প্রি নেটাল মানে যখন মায়ের পেটে আসে আর্লি আর্লি লেভেলে কী করে আর্লি প্রেগনেন্সি করা যেতে পারে যদি কোনো ফ্যামিলি থেকে গ্যালাক্সি নিয়ে হিস্ট্রি থাকে তাহলে তার একটা কোরিউনিক ভিলাস ব্যবসা নেওয়া যেতে পারে সেটা মোটামুটি টুয়েলভ উইক্সের আগে নেওয়া যেতে পারে ঠিক আছে নিজের অল প্রি নেটাল ডায়াগনস্টিক ওখানে একটা টিস্যু নিলে ওটা ফিটাল টিস্যুই ওখানে এটা স্টাডি করলে ওকে সবচেয়ে বড় কথা আমি তোমাদের ভালো করে দেখবো ফিনাইল হাইড্রোজেন টেস্টটা করেছিলাম ওই জিনেটিক টেস্ট ফেস্ট তুমি পেরিফেরিতে পাবে না কোয় আর সহজে এটা করাও হয় না আর তুমি বললি চট করে কেউ করে দেবে না কো ওই মিউসিক অ্যাসিড টেস্ট দেখবো ভালো করে ফিনাইল হাইড্রোজেন টেস্টটা লিখেছিলাম ওখানে নাইটিক অ্যাসিড যদি হিট করো ইউরিনটাকে ইউরিনে গ্যালাক্টো যাচ্ছে তাহলে গ্যালাক্টা যে ক্রিস্টাল দেখতে পাবে পুরো সাদা মিউজিক অ্যাসিডটা হিটিং ইউরিন উইথ নাইটিক অ্যাসিড ফেরি ফেরি এই ফেরি এটা কিন্তু করতেই পারবে তুমি মাইক্রোস্কোপে তাহলে দেখতে পাবে আর হোয়াই আর্লি ডায়াগনোসিস ফলোড বাই ডায়েটারি ম্যানেজমেন্ট ইসেন্সিয়াল ইন দিস কেস গ্যালাক্টো যে সোর্স বলো বডিতে কোথেকে পায় একটা বেবি হ্যাঁ মায়ের দুধ খাবে মায়ের দুধ খাবে মায়ের দুধে ল্যাকটোজ আছে তাহলে ওই ল্যাকটো থেকে গ্যালাক্টো তৈরি হচ্ছে তাহলে ফার্স্ট কাজ হচ্ছে মায়ের দুধ ঘর দুধ বন্ধ ফার্স্ট বন্ধ করতে হবে বন্ধ করতেই হবে তা নইলে এর হাত থেকে রেহাই নেই তো তাহলে বেবি নিউট্রিশন পাবে কি গ্লুকোজ খাও নিউট্রিশন তো বেবিকে দিতে হবে মিল প্রোটিন প্রোটিনও দিতে হবে অ্যাটলিস্ট মিল্কে খাওয়া খাওয়া প্রোটিন তো ডাইজেস্ট করবেন ওইভাবে আমরা তো ওই কাঁচা দুধটা খেতে অভ্যস্ত আছে মায়ের থেকে অল ট্রু ফর অল ম্যামালস সো ম্যানেজমেন্টে ইসেন্সিয়াল কেন আদার ব্রেন ড্যামেজ হবে মেন্টাল ইটারেশন হবে বেবিটার ডেথ হবে সেই জন্যে একটা অ্যাগ্রেসিভ ট্রিটমেন্ট করা দরকার আছে এই গ্যালাক্টা সিমিয়ার কেসে এই এই চারটা মনে রাখবে ভালো করে এটা আগে দুদিনে ক্লাস আমি বলতে পারিনি তো এইটা বলো বাস তুমি জোরে বলো জোরে বলো প্রাইমারি হাইপার থাইরয়েড যে রিমেম্বার একদম অ্যাবসলিউটলি কারেক্ট आंसर ডায়াগনোসিস ঠিক কেন টি থ্রি টি ফোর বেশি বেশি হয়েছে বলো কেন টি থ্রি টি ফোর বেশি হয়েছে থাইরয়েড গ্ল্যান্ড ইজ ওভার অ্যাক্টিভ থাইরয়েড গ্ল্যান্ড ইজ ওভার অ্যাক্টিভ ঠিক আছে তাহলে ওভার অ্যাক্টিভিটি অফ থাইরয়েড গ্ল্যান্ড ক্যান উইল কজ টি থ্রি অ্যান্ড টি ফোর তখন তখন কী হবে টি থ্রি টি ফোর যদি বেড়ে যায় তখন কী করবে ও টি এস কে নেগেটিভ ইনভিশন করবে যে তোমার আর দরকার নেই টিএসএস তৈরি করে আমি অ্যাডিকুয়েট আমার থাইরয়েড তৈরি হয়ে গেছে অল অফ ইউর বেঙ্গলি আই এম স্পিকিং এ গুড অ্যামাউন্ট অফ আপনি ইজ দ্য রেডি নন বেঙ্গলি ইজ দ্য রেডি নন বেঙ্গলি হু ক্যান নট আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড আই মিন ক্যান ইউ আন্ডার ইউ কুড আদারওয়াইজ আই হ্যাভ টু ওকে লেট মি সি ইফ দে টি থ্রি টি ফোর প্রোডাকশান ইজ নর্মাল রিমেম্বার ওয়ান থিং অ্যাট দ্য এন্ড দিস আই এম কনক্লুডিং দিস ক্লাস ইফ টি থ্রি টি ফোর ইজ নর্মাল দেন দেয়ার বিল নর্মাল সিকুয়েশন অফ টিএসএস অ্যান্ড নর্মাল সিকুয়েশন অফ টিআর এস ইফ দ্য টি থ্রি টি ফোর সিকুয়েশন ইজ লো it will be low because when the thyroid gland itself will be decreased under active under active i repeat it is not a normal active but under active then there will be feedback regulation positive regulation that will stimulate the hypothalamus to release more tra tra and then which will stimulate the uh, pituitary gland to secrete more tsh and because of that thing more tsh will be formed in primary hyperthyroidism gland is hyperactive that's why it is producing more t3 and t4 and it is causing a negative feedback no more production is required that is causing less t3 in primary hyperthyroidism it is due to pituitary tumor or mainly excess amount of tsh is produced by the thyroid producing cells that excess amount of tsh will increase thyroid gland to function more it will indirectly make it more that is secondary hyperthyroidism this is central hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism and if it is less then it will be more then it will cause primary hyper hyperthyroidism and if the thyroid gland uh, the pituitary gland doesn't function at all tsh level will be low and so thyroid gland will not 
be able to function properly because there is no more or TCH amount is less, despite thyroid gland becoming being normal, thyroid gland will not be produced adequate amount of TCH and TCH. Is this part clear? So I conclude and this is the end class for your session. So all the best for your examination, pass. I wish that you pass, so all pass. In detail. Basal ganglia and internal capsule. You have seen one in viscera. These structures I have shown you in the viscera. So today we will discuss. These are important for your long question. Both the topics are important for long question. Okay. Internal capsule very frequently given question. Basal ganglia also counts. And Parkinson's disease is clinical aspect of the basal ganglia. That is also an important long question. Okay, so basal ganglia, basal nuclei or basal ganglia, these are the large masses of grey matter situated in the basal part of the white matter of the cerebral hemisphere. So this part, this part is forming the basal ganglia or basal nuclei and here is the thalamus. It lies in close relation with the thalamus. And it is a, these are large masses of grey matter, you remember it. It is a mass of grey matter situated in the basal part of the white matter of the cerebral hemisphere. Next is components. Components are very frequently asked in your viva also. If brain in brain viscera, components are, can be asked in your viva. Components and functions are important for viva. Also theory it can come. So basal nuclei include corpus striatum. Corpus striatum consists of the caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus. Lentiform nucleus again formed by two parts, globus pallidus and putamen. Next is next uh, including the claustrum and the amygdaloid body. So basal nuclei include the corpus striatum claustrum and amygdaloid body. Now what are the functions of the corpus striatum? Corpus striatum forms a part of extrapyramidal system and controls the muscle tone, posture and quality of the movements. Amygdaloid body forms a part of limbic system and performs role in emotional and motivational aspects of movements. Functions of claustrum is not known. So three parts and their functions. This part function is not known. So these are the components and here are the functions. Components are corpus striatum, claustrum and amygdala body. Corpus striatum consists of caudate nucleus, lentiform nucleus, which is again formed by lupus pallidus and putamen. Okay. Functions, corpus striatum controls, extrapyramidal system, amygdaloid body, part of limbic system, and claustrum is not function not known. Now we will discuss the corpus striatum in details. Corpus striatum is located lateral and anterior to the thalamus. Ki kotha bolchis tokhuntege? Chup chape di hure bos. What are the divisions? Corpus striatum is subdivided by the fibers of internal capsule into caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus. And lentiform nucleus is further divided into globus pallidus and putamen. Okay, so now we will discuss caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus, their functions. Caudate nucleus is C separate mass of grey matter. It has its three parts, head, body and tail. Lentiform nucleus is lens. Lentiform is coming from the word lens. Lens is a biconvex mass. So it is also a biconvex lens separate mass of grey matter. Okay. And what are the parts? Putamen and globus pallidus. Putamen is large and lateral part and globus pallidus is small medial part. And external medullary lamina separates these two, putamen and globus pallidus separated by this uh, streak of white matter that is known as external medullary lamina. Okay, and also there is internal medullary lamina 
which separates two parts of the globus pallidum. Okay, understood. Next is functions, refinement of reflex and voluntary skin and manipulative movements. Controls the automatic associated movements, prevents unwanted movements and maintains the muscle tone, controls emotional expression of the movement. So these are the functions of the corpus striatum. Now, anteroinferior end of the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus, they are connected by the bands of grey matter passing through the internal capsule and these bands impart the striated appearance. Hence, the name is given corpus striatum. See here, this egg-separate structure is the internal capsule. Okay. Medial to the internal capsule lies anteriorly there is caudate nucleus Posteriorly, there is thalamus, and laterally, uh, on the uh, lateral to the internal capsule, here lies the lentiform nucleus, which consists of outer part laterally putamen and medially globus pallidus. And this green line, they are representing the white matter line. This outer one is the lateral medullary lamina and here is the medial medullary lamina. Also known as lateral is the external medullary lamina, medial is the internal medullary lamina. So external medullary lamina or lateral medullary lamina separating the globus pallidus from the putamen. And this medial or internal medullary lamina separating the two parts of the globus pallidus. Okay. Outside it, this area, this white matter area is known as the external capsule. Outside it, this saucer separate grey matter structure, this is known as claustrum. Outside the claustrum will be the extreme capsule, okay? And outside it will be the insula, insular cortex, okay? Understood? This is the location of different parts. And here you can see this and this is head of caudate nucleus. It is three separate structure. It is covering over the thalamus and tail is located posteriorly here. Here is the tail of the section of tail of the caudate nucleus. And see here this anterior inferior end of the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus. These two are mainly the putamen connected via this uh, structure and forming striations, striated appearance, hence known as corpus striatum. This is caudate nucleus, lentiform nucleus, together forming the corpus striatum. Okay, understood. Now, phylogeny of the corpus striatum. Neostriatum is recently evolved part and it includes the caudate nucleus and putamen. Caudate nucleus and putamen is included in the neostriatum. And paleostratum is ancient part and it consists of the globus pallidus. Here is the globus pallidus forming paleostratum. Okay. In cerebellum also we have read archicerebellum, paleocerebellum, neocerebellum like this. Neo means newest one. Okay. Paleo and archi these are ancient one. So correct nucleus it is smaller anterior part of the corpus striatum, it lies medial to the internal capsule, it is C separate mass of grey matter and it consists of head, body and tail. Head is large rounded projection, it forms the floor of the anterior horn of lateral ventricle. Body is narrow long part, it forms the floor of the body of lateral ventricle. Next is tail. It is slender part and that forms the roof of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle. Anteriorly, it is continuous with the amygdaloid body. Okay. Next, we go to the lentiform nucleus. It is a biconvex lens separate mass of grey matter. Hence, the name lentiform nucleus. What is location? It is located deep to the insula and lateral to the internal capsule. Location of the lentiform nucleus. What are the parts? It is divided by a layer of white matter called the external or lateral medullary lamina 
into two parts, putamen and globus pallidus. Putamen is large lateral part, darker in color. Globus pallidus is a smaller medial part. It is pale in color due to presence of myelinated fibers. Pallid means pale, pale in color. Globus pallidus is divided by internal or medial medullary lamina of white matter into inner and outer parts. Okay, you have seen all these structures in the previous picture. Now we go to functions. Functions of corpus striatum. Corpus striatum performs important role in extrapyramidal system. It performs its following functions. Refinement of reflex and voluntary movements. Refinement of skill and manipulating movements of the body, for example, trading and rhythm. Controls the automatic associated movements such as swinging of arms during walking. Prevents the unwanted movements, maintains the muscle tone and controls the emotional expression of the movement. So all these are functions of the corpus striatum. Okay. In your viscera table, viva, you have to know the parts and the functions. Functions are very, very important. See here, this is a coronal section through the lateral ventricle and third ventricle. These are the cavities of two lateral ventricle. Here is the third ventricle. On the two sides of the third ventricle, here are the thalamus. Okay. And this eight separate structure is the internal capsule. Here you can see the head of the caudate nuclear. Here is the tail of the caudate nucleus. Okay. Here is the internal capsule. So medial to the internal capsule lies caudate nucleus anteriorly, thalamus posteriorly. Okay. Lateral to the internal capsule lies this lentiform nucleus. Okay. Lentiform nucleus again consists of putamen laterally and globus pallidus uh, medially. Okay. And globus pallidus is again divided by internal medullary lamina into outer and inner part. This is external medullary lamina. Here is internal medullary lamina. Okay. Lateral to the putamen, here is the external capsule. Lateral to it, this gray matter structure is the claustrum. Okay. Location of claustrum. And lateral to the claustrum, here is the extreme capsule okay and outside it lies this insula okay insular cortex of the brain and here below the thalamus here you can see the subthalamus and here is the midbrain the tectum portion okay so these are the structures you have to see so this red color structures all are forming part of the uh, corpus striatum Putum and globus pallidus together forming lectiform nucleus. These are the two medullary lamina, caudate nucleus, claustrum. All these are together forming the corpus striatum. So you have seen the location of different structures. See here, this is lectiform nucleus, lens separate, biconcave lens separate. And here is the caudate nucleus, the green one. Here is head of caudate nucleus, body of caudate nucleus, here is the tail of caudate nucleus. In this part, it is lying in the floor of the anterior horn and body of the lateral ventricle. And the blue lining is of lateral ventricle, anterior horn, body, posterior horn, inferior horn. And you can see the tail of the caudate nucleus is forming roof of the inferior horn. Okay. And tail at the extreme end of the tail amygdaloid body is attached which is taking part in limbic system okay and this is internal capsule fibers they are extending upward into the cerebrum as the corona radiata okay forming the corona radiata and the blue one the blue structure around which the caudate nucleus is lying this structure is the thalamus okay you have seen in the cerebral section of the brain thalamus and caudate nucleus <coughs> So what are the connection of corpus striatum? These comes in your theory paper, okay, connections. So neostriatum consists of caudate nucleus and putamen. It has apparent fibers. 
afferent fibers are corticostriate fibers from cerebral cortex, thalamostriate fibers, nigrostriate fibers from substantia nigra. And efferent fibers are going to striatopalatal fibers to the global palatus and thin fibers to the thalamus and substantia nigra. Okay. Next, paleostriatum which is consist of globus palatus. Afferents are coming, most of the fibers from neostriatum that is caudate and foot, caudate nucleus and foot on and here you can see efferent from neostriatum is going to the globus palatus. So it is globus palatus, paleostriatum getting is most of the afferent from neostriatum. And few fibers from substantia nigra, thalamus and subthalamus. Okay, so near from the nearby structures mainly. And efferent fibers is going to thalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, red nucleus, olivary nucleus, substantia nigra, reticular nuclei, through this ansa lenticularis, fasciculares, lenticularis, and subthalamic fasciculus. Okay, so these are the efferents of the paleostriatum. See here, this putament and globus pallidus. From the putament, efferent is going to this globus pallidus. Okay, efferent is coming from cerebral cortex, caudate nucleus, thalamus, substantia nigra, like this. Okay, and uh, this is globus pallidus. You can see the efferents are going to subthalamic nucleus to the thalamus, okay, from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex, going to red nucleus, reticular formation, substantia nigra, like this, okay, so the, these are the afferent and different connections, also to the inferior olivary nucleus, okay, so these are the afferent and different connections of corpus stratum. Now we go to clostrum, next part of the vessel ganglia. Clostrum is a thin sheet of grey matter which lies deep to the insula. It is considered as a detached part of insula since it is saucer separate. Okay. Relations medially, there is external capsule separates clostrum from putamen. Laterally, extreme capsule separates the clostrum from the insular cortex and its connection and functions are not known. Next, we go to amygdaloid body. It is a small almond shaped mass of grey matter in the temporal lobe. Okay. Location it lies anterior superior to the tip of inferior horn of lateral ventricle and it lies deep to the arcus. So, this is the location anterior inferior to the tip of inferior horn. You have seen in previous picture. Anterior inferior to the tip of the inferior one. Here is the location of amygdaloid body. What are the connections? Afferent, it is getting afferent from olfactory tract. Ancus is here in the ancus olfactory cortex is located, area 28. Okay. So it is nearby to amygdaloid body. It is getting afferent from olfactory tract. Different fibers from form the stria terminalis. Stria terminalis uh, located in the floor of the lateral ventricle. So the different from amygdaloid body are forming the stria terminalis, which terminate in anterior commissure, anterior perforated substance, and hypothalamic nuclei. So what are the function? It forms part of limbic system. Helps in emotional control. Okay, understood. So amygdaloid body location small almond separate mass of grey matter in the temporal lobe lies anterior superior to the tip of inferior horn of lateral ventricle lies deep to the ancus. What are the connections? Apparent fibers are coming from olfactory tract. Different from the stria terminalis, terminates in anterior commissure, anterior perforated substance and hypothalamic nucleus. Functions it forms part of limbic system and helps in emotional control. Okay, understood. Next, uh, the fasciculus. 
through which the lentiform nucleus is connected to other structures. Lenticular fasciculus or fasciculus lenticularis, it carries efferent fiber from the globus pallidus and it passes through the posterior limb of internal capsule. They pass superior to the subthalamic nucleus as the lenticum fasciculus and terminates in the thalamus. And some lenticularis, some efferent fibers from globus pallidus curve around the inferior aspect of posterior limb of internal capsule and form a loop called ansa lenticularis. And its fibers terminate in thalamus, such as the nigra, red nucleus, reticular nuclei, and inferior olivary nucleus. Next is thalamic fasciculus. It is uh, formed by lenticular fasciculus and thalamic fibers of ansa lenticularis, so previous to. And subthalamic fasciculus, these are fibers connecting the globus pallidus and subthalamic nuclei, median and lateral geniculate bodies. These are known as subthalamic nuclei. Okay. Next, we go to the clinical aspect of the corpus striatum. Important clinical aspect is Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism is a broader term that includes a combination of a group of symptoms such as bradykinesia, stiffness, and tremors. What are the causes of Parkinsonism? Parkinson's disease due to lesion of vessel ganglia, side effects of some drugs, infection and vascular diseases. So these are the main important causes of Parkinsonism. So Parkinson's disease or paralysis agitans, it is a neurodegenerative disorder due to deficiency of dopamine in the corpus striatum. Okay. Incidence is 1% individual over the age of 50 years. What is the anatomical basis? Melanin containing neurons of the substantia nigra produces dopamine and which is carried to the corpus striatum by the nitrostriate fibers. Dopamine inhibits, inhibits neuron of the corpus striatum and listen from substantia nigra or nitrostriatal fiber, there will be lack of dopamine in corpus striatum, loss of inhibition of neuron of corpus striatum, extrapyramidal symptoms of the Parkinson's disease. Okay. What these are the symptoms? There will be dementia, mask-like face, expressionless face, stooped posture, reduced arm swing during walking, Lead pipe, rigidity, resting tremor. Resting tremor occurs in Parkinsonism and intensive tremor is occurring in cerebellar lesions. Yes, sir, do you have read? Next is pain rolling tremor of the hands, steep suckling gait, okay, waddling gait occurring in the cerebellar lesions. So, this you have to remember. These symptoms are also important for your MCQs. I mean, MCQs, they are asked very frequently. So, signs and symptoms are resting tremors such as shaking of hands or head at rest, cogwheel or leg pipe muscular rigidity due to increased muscle tone on passive movements, resistance increases and decreases alternatively, cogwheel and leg pipe. So, mask face appearance for loss of facial expression, bradykinesia that is difficulty in taking initial steps during walking and in terminating the ongoing movement. Pin rolling movements of hand that is circular movements of opposed arm over the other fingers, pin rolling movement. Stooped posture, flexed back and adapted and flexed and bent knees. Absence of association movements such as arm swinging during the walking. So these are the symptoms. It comes as a long question in physiology also. Na? Physiology is the is the Parkinsonism. Okay, so also important in anatomy it can also come. So treatment, what is the treatment? Levodopa. Dopamine precursor is useful here. Dopamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. 
hence lipodopa should be given lipodopa can cross the blood brain barrier and via enzyme action it will be converted into dopamine there small surgical reception of globus pallidus and anterior nucleus of thalamus this can also be done as a treatment okay so parkinsonism definition group of symptoms including these three mainly bradykinesia stiffness and tremor cause is lesion of basal ganglia deficiency of dopamine lack of inhibition of corpus luteum leading to extrapyramidal symptoms signs and symptoms are resting tremor cogwheel rigidity mask like face bradykinesia pain rolling movements to posture treatment is levodopa and surgical resection of globus pallidus anterior nucleus of thalamus next other clinical aspect of this uh, basal nuclei disorders of basal nuclei produce parkinson's disease we have already discussed other are the chorea acidosis hemibalismus okay chorea is characterized by brisk jerky and purposeless movement for example twitching of face there are two types of chorea sydenham's chorea and huntington's chorea Sydenham's chorea is a complication of rheumatic fever and recovery is complete and Huntington's chorea it is a ki kotha bolchis re eto khon theke chup kore bos Huntington's chorea it is a rare dominant genetic hereditary disorder worsening with the age next is acidosis which is characterized by slow sinus worm like rhythmic movements and it is commonly occurs in fingers and toes okay next is balismus the lesion of subthalamic nuclei produces balismus it is characterized by violent involuntary movement of trunk girdle and proximal part of the limbs unilateral lesion affects the contralateral side of the body hence called hemibalismus okay choreus is dance hemi means half balismus is jumping about in this words are coming from greek okay that's why it is known as mainly hemibalismus okay next is wilson's disease it is seen in young adults following the hepatolenticular degeneration it is a genetic disorder of copper metabolism the degeneration of lenticular nucleus and liver cirrhosis occurs in wilson's disease and it produces muscular rigidity impaired voluntary movement uncontrolled laughing or crying this occurs in wilson's disease it has asterixis or wing beating tremor following the extension of the upper limb okay next we go to the internal capsule another very very important topic internal capsule you must have to know before going to give theory paper okay internal capsule is a compact bundle of projection fibers what is the location it lies between the thalamus and caudate nucleus medially and lentiform nucleus laterally you have seen in the picture next is continuation corona radiata and cross cerebri corona radiata the fibers of internal capsule fan out cranially and form the corona radiata radiating fibers like sun rays next is cross cerebri the fiber of internal capsule approximates inferiorly to form cross cerebri of the midbrain okay so superiorly it is radiating upward to the cerebral cortex and the corona radiata and inferiorly they are approximated to form the cross cerebri okay understood next is say it is a v shaped structure in the transverse section with concavity is directed laterally now what are the parts of the internal capsule internal capsule consists of this five parts anteriorly posteriorly genu retrolentiform part sublentiform part anterior limb it lies between 
caudate nucleus and the anterior part of the lentiform nucleus. Posterior limb lies between thalamus and the posterior part of lentiform nucleus. Next is genu. It is a bend between the anterior and posterior limbs. Next is retrolentiform part lies posteriorly behind the lentiform nucleus. And sublentiform part lies below the lentiform nucleus at the posterior end of the internal capsule. Okay, so these are the five parts of the internal capsule. See here, this is the location of the internal capsule. Anteriorly, genu, posteriorly. So medial to it lies this corpus callus, uh, sorry, this is caudate nucleus and the thalamus lies medial to the internal capsule and lateral to the internal capsule lies this lentiform nucleus. Okay, understood? So this is the location of internal capsule. This is a, uh, previous one was coronal section. Okay, and see here, these are the fibers of internal capsule. They are radiating upward towards the cerebral cortex as the corona radiator fibers and below they are approximated to form the crass cerebri of the midbrain. Okay. See this uh, diagram you have to practice. Okay. This is a schematic diagram of internal capsule. See the five parts. Anterior limb, bent is the genu. This is posterior limb and here lies the retrolentiform part and below it lies this sublentiform part. Okay, so these are the five parts of the internal capsule. And here also you can see medial to the internal capsule lies this caudate nucleus and thalamus. Lateral to it lies this lentiform nucleus. Okay. And you can see here the sublentiform part is connected with the medial geniculate body which is a component of auditory pathway and this uh, retrolentiform part is connected with lateral geniculate body which is a part of the optic pathway okay so this diagram you must practice so internal capsule are projection fibers continuation upward as corona radiata below as cross cerebri. These are the parts, it is V effect, it has anterior limb, genu, posterior limb, retrolentiform part, sublentiform part. Now the constituent fibers, there are motor fibers and sensory fibers. Motor fibers are corticopontine fibers. Corticopontine means it will come from all the lobes of the cerebral cortex. So these are frontopontine, parietopontine, temporopontine, occipitopontine fibers. Pyramidal fibers, these are corticonuclear and corticospinal fibers. And another is extrapyramidal fibers. Next, sensory fibers are anterior thalamic radiation, superior thalamic radiation, inferior thalamic radiation and posterior thalamic radiation. Next, the blood supply. Blood supply of internal capsule is also very important. We will discuss in details. Okay. So, it is medial and lateral branches of middle cerebral artery, stride branches of anterior cerebral artery, cortical branches of anterior choroidal artery, few direct branches from internal carotid artery, central branches of posterior communicating artery, posterolateral central branches of posterior cerebral artery. So these are the blood supply of the internal capsule. Now these are the clinical aspect. These are regarding this blood supply, okay. Lesion of artery of cerebral hemorrhage. These are also important for MCQ. This comes in your MCQ. Which artery is involved, which fiber will be damaged, paralysis occurs in which area, this will be asked, okay. So, lesion of artery of cerebral hemorrhage is Charcot's artery. Charcot's artery of cerebral hemorrhage. Damage to the posterior limb. It will lead to paralysis of opposite half of body and face. Lesions of recurrent artery of pubnar. It leads to damage to the genu and anterior limb of internal capsule. And leads to paralysis of face and upper limb on the opposite side. Okay. Next is 
thrombosis of anterior choroidal artery it leads to damage to posteriorly sublactiform and natrolactiform part damage in there will be visual and auditory defects okay visual defect is leading to hemiplegia so these are the motor fibers constituent fibers of the internal capsule motor fibers are corticopontine fibers pyramidal fibers extra pyramidal fibers corticopontine are again from all these lobes frontopontine parietopontine occipitopontine temporopontine coming from respective lobe to the pontine nuclei pyramidal fibers these are corticonuclear fiber from the cerebral cortex to the contralateral motor nuclei of the third fourth fifth and twelfth cranial lobe and corticospinal fibers from the cerebral cortex to the contralateral anterior horn cells of the spinal cord next is extra pyramidal fibers from the cerebral cortex to the subcortical nucleus such as red nucleus substantia nigra reticular nuclei olivary nuclei and so on okay so these are the motor fibers of internal capsule see here the motor disposition of fibers passing through the internal capsule has been shown here at the location of frontopontine fiber this is sensory anterior thalamic radiation here is cortico nuclear fiber for head and neck are located in this genu okay anterior limb has frontopontine fiber and anterior thalamic radiation here is the fibers for upper limb trunk and lower limb cortico spinal fibers okay and this is auditory radiation here is the optic radiation okay coming from medial genicular body and lateral genicular body and here uh, lies the parietopontine and occipitopontine fibers in the posterior limb okay and auditory radiation temporopontine fibers are located in this uh, retro uh, sublentiform part see here this chart is very important this chart you have to know okay constituent fibers of internal capsule different parts motor each part which motor fibers are present which sensory fibers are present this comes in your theory paper okay and arterial supply you have to know for the clinical aspects so anterior limb motor fibers are frontopontine fibers we have seen in previous picture and sensory fibers are anterior thalamic radiation it is supplied by direct branch from anterior cerebral artery and recurrent branch of anterior cerebral artery then genu genu have frontopontine fiber and corticonuclear fibers sensory fibers are anterior part of superior thalamic radiation and arterial supply direct branch from internal carotid artery and posterior communicating artery next you go to posterior limb posterior limb has cortico spinal fiber cortico pontine fiber and cortico rubral fiber sensory fibers are superior thalamic radiation arterial supply by lateral and medial stride branches of medial cerebral artery and anterior choroidal artery sublentic form part it contains motor fibers parietopontine and temporopontine these are located in sublentiform part okay and sensory fibers are inferior thalamic or auditory radiation these are the sensory next it is supplied by posterior cerebral artery anterior choroidal artery next we go to retrolentiform part it contains motor fibers are parietopontine and occipito pontine retro means posterior so posteriorly like this occipital lobes occipital pontine sub means below temporal lobe is lying below in the lower part of the brain so it is containing the temporal pontine fibers like this you can remember okay oxy in the occipital cord there is the visual cortex 
so optic radiation will be lying there so posterior so sensory fibers are posterior thalamic for optic radiation and supplied by posterior cerebral artery so this chart is you remember very carefully okay next we go to arterial supply internal capsule gives passages to large number of fibers through a small zone hence its vascular lesion affects large area of the body and the internal capsule is supplied by this following arteries median and lateral branch of median cerebral artery side branches of anterior cerebral artery cortical branches of arterial choroidal artery few direct branch from internal carotid artery central branches of posterior communicating artery and posterior lateral central branches of posterior cerebral artery the next these are the important arteries this named arteries charcot artery of cerebral hemorrhage and other is recurrent artery of huge nerve so charcot artery of cerebral hemorrhage is one of the larger striate branches of the middle cerebral artery okay it is the larger branch and more frequently ruptured recurrent artery of huge nerve is one of the striate branches of anterior cerebral artery which is large and takes the recurrent course that's why the name recurrent artery of huge nerve see this diagram you have to practice for blood supply of internal capsule you see this one is internal carotid artery here is the direct branch from internal carotid from here the anterior cerebral artery it is giving the recurrent artery of huge nerve is supplying the anterior limb from the recurrent branch of anterior cerebral artery and this branch is direct branch from anterior cerebral artery supplying anterior limb okay and genuine is supplied by direct branch from internal carotid and also branch of posterior communicating artery this part is the posterior limb supplied by lateral and medial striate branch this is lateral medial striate branch and branch from anterior choroidal artery and this part sublentiform part it is supplied by branch from anterior choroidal artery posterior cerebral artery posterior cerebral is branch from basilar artery you have read during circle of willy okay and here retroentiform part it is supplied by branch of posterior cerebral artery so this is blood supply or arterial supply of the internal capsule okay so this recurrent artery of huge nerve and charcot artery of the charcot artery of cerebral hemorrhage are important artery charcot artery is one of the largest branch of this striate branches okay so lesion of internal capsule vascular lesion of internal capsule are common it involves rupture of vessels which results in hemorrhage or occlusion leading to necrosis occurs commonly in medial and lateral branches of middle cerebral artery effect lesion of internal capsule which results in upper motor neuron type of paralysis of opposite half of body and face specific lesions lesion of artery of cerebral hemorrhage or charcot artery damage to posterior limb paralysis of opposite half of body and face common cause of hemiplegia stroke okay lesion of huge nerve leads to damage to the genu and anterior limb of internal capsule leads to paralysis of face and upper limb on the opposite side next is thrombosis of anterior choroidal artery it leads to damage to posterior limb sublentiform retroentiform parts leading to visual uh, paralysis okay visual and auditory defects so these are the clinical aspects of blood supply of the internal capsule okay that's all any queries regarding vessel ganglia and internal capsule okay so we, now we have to see these structures in the viscera okay